Red Bull have won the last two races and quite honestly I'm not a fan of that so we need to return to winning ways today in Imola. Hello folks, welcome back to Mercedes. It's episode 69 and today I've got the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix coming up for you today. Yes, it's the funny number episode that we are here for today and we are still leading the championship at least in the drivers with George Russell by eight points ahead of Max Verstappen largely thanks to Verstappen's teammate Charles Leclerc winning last time out in Singapore. Lando Norris is still in third. Oscar Piastri hasn't quite had the impact we were hoping obviously the, the field is a little bit closer together in terms of competition this season so he's struggling to make his mark and the constructors championship reflects that red bull have an 11 point lead now in that department but we are coming to round four of the season with some upgrades so we do have if i can find the right screen here we go we do have not one but two new chassis on the way i behind the scenes started developing this third chassis thinking i only had one and uh, turns out i'd already started manufacturing the second one but we're going to put them on the car which will give the cars a bit of a boost we are also designing a new front wing and some new suspension which comes with a lot of drag reduction so that's the only update we can apply to the car for this episode but we will still give it our all uh, there's not really anything to update you on i've just done a couple of developments and moved the 25 days forwards from singapore to this race and uh well i think we're ready to dive straight in so i'll see you in q3 after i've done ye old practice just checking in with you ahead of q1 we are going to need to give george russell fresh power unit components and a new gearbox this is because uh well obviously the engine's a bit tired a bit well used um but he had the accident in practice in australia where he picked up the grid penalty and obviously suffered some damage to the engine and its components as well as the car so he will need to take grid penalties probably quite early in the season to be honest if we can get to just before the summer break before it happens that would be very very useful obviously the first one is a 10 place and then from there on it's five but he should be in a decent position to do something pretty good in qualifying here because it's a power circuit now Imola with the big long straight after the chicane at the end of the lap was removed so uh, I'm going to find out how he does in the first two sessions you'll find out in Q3. Only fifth and sixth fastest then in Q2 but we have only used the single set of tyres to get here uh, so we'll assume that the rest of the teams have been using other sets so George Russell has four brand new sets of soft tyres to use, two of which we can use in Q3. Oscar Piastri weirdly only has uh, three sets left because the game decided to use an extra set, I suppose, in practice three, which I simulate. Um, so yeah, let's go with this and see what our first runs have in store for us. If we can get a slipstream, that would be fantastic. Okay, we have managed to follow someone out of the pit lane and it's Max Verstappen, so hopefully... The Dutchman can do us a solid and give us a slipstream. Piastri seems to have dropped back from Russell and I don't think George is actually close enough to get much of a tow. Piastri is a long way back actually. Verstappen fastest in the first sector, which isn't ideal because we're supposed to be getting a slipstream from him. Although we look a little bit closer there. Let's see how the middle sector pans out. We're actually still slower. So 20, we've both done 25 twos. I don't know what Verstappen's done. But he is going very, very fast indeed. And he's about to go to the top of the times. There he goes on a 13.5. And we are a tenth and a half down with George That's Russell. And three tenths off with yeah, Oscar happened. Piastri. So we have pace to find here at Mercedes. And it's an all Red Bull front row as Leclerc goes second and Norris puts himself in between us okay we will have a slipstream from Charles Leclerc on our second run 
Oscar Piastri got balked a bit through letting traffic, uh, letting cars on a flying lap through. I don't think he's made the flag. Okay, so we've taken the flag. Uh, oh, he has just, he's only just made the flag. Right, let's see what George Russell can do while he's following Charles Leclerc. There is a traffic in the form of an Aston Martin ahead. Improvements for George Russell in the first sector, but not for Oscar Piastri, who I'm guessing had to navigate some traffic. Can Russell pull out a bit of a lap here? Verstappen looks like his pole position is safe because Leclerc is not improving. George Russell then, what can you do across the line? Leclerc stays second, I would guess, and Russell doesn't improve his lap time either. So it was an anticlimactic final run. I would assume we were probably too close, thanks to the traffic, but Max Verstappen is on pole position for the second time this season. Uh, or maybe even the third. Did he have pole position in Singapore? I can't remember off the top of my head right now. <laughs> Correct me in the comments if he was. So uh, Red Bull remain on top, but we've outgunned them in races before when they've had a faster car, so we need to do exactly that in the Grand Prix. Going for a two-stop strategy today around Imola. We do regularly go for two-stop strategies at Mercedes because we like to be aggressive. And my thinking here, even though it's a very slow pit lane and you will lose a lot of time, kind of hoping for a safety car. That's my kind of get-out-of-jail-free card. We've underfueled a little bit, but we've got two sets of soft tyres, brand new sets of soft tyres for George Russell. We've got extra sets of medium tyres for Oscar Piastri so we're going to try and utilize those as best we can see if we can make some early progress and undercut the others if they all go for a one stop medium to hards they could all be sitting ducks at the end especially if there's a safety car and we can get a free stop so uh, let's get to it let's do a motor race an all red ball front row then for the second race in a row Verstappen versus Leclerc off the line the lights are out, the race is on. Can George Russell get amongst it on those soft tyres? Immediately, he's up into second position. Piastri making progress as well. And I think I saw the Red Bulls were on medium. We'll check out the strategy options once we've negotiated Tamburello, and I think we're gonna be coming out of it in P2. George Russell into second place. Get in there, great start. And Piastri has split the Ferraris. Excellent start from Mercedes on the soft tyres. Uh, we are one of three drivers, we have two of three drivers on the soft tyres on the opening lap. Piastri is no, chasing Norris, who's also on the softs. And Russell is putting it to Verstappen, really going hard in these opening corners to get the lead. We will do our normal not deploying trick on lap two. And hopefully once... Yep. Everything settles down and DRS activates. We can redeploy and close the gap. All right, start of lap three. George Russell is looking more in his mirrors at the moment, but we have just started deploying and Verstappen will be vulnerable next time around. We are trying to drive in clear air to cool the tires and also give ourselves a chance of overtaking. Let's see what we can achieve with the DRS. Russell absolutely on it here. He wants through. We're turning the overtake aggression up. Just show me what you And we're going to hop on board. Are we going to make this move and take an early lead here at the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix? Verstappen is on the right hand side of the track. He offers no defence to the inside. And George Russell takes the lead of the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. Fantastic news for Mercedes. Piastri is. He's got a front row seat for this squabble, the Ferrari and the Red Bull. And Leclerc is just about holding off Lando Norris. What we might actually do is just look after everything with Oscar. And then we'll just pick up the pieces, I suppose, when those two inevitably collide. I think Verstappen will still have DRS, but not the next time around. He's now 1.3, 1.4 seconds behind we did a 17-4 Verstappen did a 19-1 we were two and a half seconds quicker <laughs> that was insane that was a lap of laps from George Russell 
All right, approaching the end of lap 10, George Russell has pulled out a near five second lead on Max Verstappen. He's going to need to continue pulling the gap out. We'll probably look after the tyres a little bit more. We've got the inherent pace because of the tyre advantage. Piastri is stuck in traffic, and that traffic is Lando Norris, Charles Leclerc, and Max Verstappen. So Oscar is very much in the fight for a potential podium here as the Red Bulls are duking it out and slowing each other down. So if they can keep doing that, that is gravy for us. That is absolutely lovely. But worst case scenario, we're just going to undercut them when we stop earlier. And then it'll be about building a gap back to them. I wonder if we turn... Oh, here goes Oscar Piastri. Is he going through? No, I thought he was sizing the move up. Norris has now dropped out of that one second window. So hopefully... We're going to see Oscar Piastri make an overtake. He's looking very, very feisty, is the young Aussie. He's... <laughs> Norris has just chopped him off. And are we going to make the move? Yeah, we're going to break to Fossey Hearts. I think. Down into Tamburello. It's laid on the brakes. It's still side by side. And Norris is just, just, just hanging in there, which is enormously frustrating and it's allowed the Red Bulls to pull away a bit which I'm not really a fan of. Uh, Red Bull definitely going for the one stop. Russell pushing on with his tyres although we're going to fall a little bit short of our optimal pit stop lap but that's fine. We could actually switch to the hards although they might be a bit slower. Actually but let's do that with Oscar. Go for the hards now and then we'll put him on a set of mediums towards the end of the race. So we'll pit him a bit earlier. Get a nice big undercut. And he's got plenty of space behind because Gasly's on a set of hards. Although, we're going to lose sort of 20 odd seconds. So he'll probably come out in some traffic. But Oscar Piastri is heading for the pit lane. Here he comes. We need a nice good stop here from the mechanics in the pit lane. And that's all right. That's all right. Can we get George to his optimal pit stop lap? Probably not. We might have to bring him in this lap around. And Piastri, ah, that is disgusting. He's actually come out last. So we need to crack on with his strategy. We need to call George Russell in for those mediums. He will rejoin probably 10th, I would say. Let's see. Nice clean stop. The Red Bulls now lead. Oh, we're going to be right in amongst all of this. That's not too bad, actually. P7. P7. That is that's much better than P20, that's for sure. Uh, Oscar is trying to find a way past the Alfa Romeo of De Vries. I still haven't put anything on that turns them into Audi. I'll, I'll do that one day. Although the Haas does have DRS. That's going to complicate issues. And going to give us a bit of a headache. But if we can pass him into Villeneuve. Oh, that was close. If we can pass him into Villeneuve. That would be useful. In fact, let's deploy in the next lap around. Right, I will come back to you around lap 30. And or, and or when the top four decide to pit. As Russell now makes the move on Behrman. And I'm sure he'll pass. Some, well, we've got the weird cut screen. We've got a yellow flag. I hate it when it does that. It's so random. It, okay, Max Verstappen is in the pit. Well, he's exiting the pit lane on a set of hard tyres, is the Dutchman. George Russell has gone through and is eight and a half seconds clear of him. Lando Norris stopped and has come out quite a way behind as well. He is, uh, ooh, what's that, nine plus six. That is 15 seconds. That's just behind George Russell, who now runs third and is sizing up an overtake on one Pierre Gasly. And we're going to make this move right now. Uh, George, please. Uh, Gasly is defending like... Well, he was defending like a lion, but George has decided to hell with that. I'm coming past. He's coming past, isn't he? Isn't he? Up the hill into Piratella, job done. Right, Leclerc will be due in 
any time now. So we need to crack on, keep building this gap to Verstappen so that when we box, we don't have as much ground to make up. Oscar is now back up to P6. Leclerc's in the box as well. He'll be going to hards. Piastri, I think probably his best bet is to beat Gasly and finish in P5. If we finish anything higher than fifth with Oscar, I think that's a, a job very, very well done. But our main target is to win this race now with George Russell. We have a lead of almost 10 seconds over Verstappen. So that's something. And we need... We'll lose 24 seconds in the pit stop. So 14 seconds to make up on old on new softs versus old hards. Very, very doable. All right, we're at lap 36. We are still seven or so laps out from George Russell's next pit stop. We haven't been able to push as hard as we wanted to because we need to get the tyres to the pit window. We are in an okay position. We do just need to make sure we keep this gap to Verstappen as big as possible. But the Dutchman has decided to put the hammer down and is now within six and a half seconds of us, which isn't fantastic, but there's still another stop for us to do. There might even be a well-timed safety car, so uh, fingers crossed for that. Well, there it is. There is the well-timed safety car that we were looking for. So, George Russell, come to the pit lane, please. Oscar Piastri, also come to the pit lane, please. Let's go like this. Let's top up everything. Uh, in fact, we'll just go. We'll, stay, we'll keep it in neutral. We'll save the fuel. This is very useful for us in terms of the fuel. I don't know what's happened. Oh my gosh, Max Verstappen is out of the race. Well, well, well. <laughs> One of our main contenders has given us the free pit stop we wanted. And he's done it by crashing out of this race. He's done a Charles Leclerc. He's thrown it at the wall at the very anti alta. Max Verstappen departs the race and hands us a golden chance to win it. Right, nice positive. pit stop. Where does that bring us out? Should bring us out in P2. It has. Lando Norris is just behind us. Piastri. Will he beat Gasly? Mm, not quite. Not quite. But he'll be very, very close. Right. We need to manage these tyres very carefully, George. All the way to the end. VSC ending. We'll go standard. We'll deploy. Copy. And we'll just keep saving that fuel for now. So the gap we need to make up is 8.8 .8 seconds. That is very, very interesting. We do have Lando Norris on our tail, though. On used hards, there is that. They'll, they'll, once the softs come up to temperature, we'll be okay. But it's getting them up to temperature for now. We just need to manage them to the end. George Russell's soft tyres have come up to temperature, and he has got a distinct pace advantage over Charles Leclerc. But we are bringing Lando Norris with us. He is stuck in that DRS uh, range, I would suppose to call it, and it's just following us all the way to the back of Leclerc, who is going to be under pressure from not one, but two opponents in this race. But Norris is giving us a bit of a hard time here. I'm not really appreciating this, Lando. I kind of thought you'd disappear after a while, but he's clearly got the power of the Tifosi on his side. And we are still closing in on a former darling of the Tifosi in Charles Leclerc. There is still 19 laps to go. So I don't feel the need to kill the tyres just yet. We will catch Leclerc eventually because his tyres will just get older and older and older. But we do need to make sure ours are in a good position once we do get there. So I'm going to check in with you at lap 50 and show you where we're at. Oscar Piastri is in fourth place. Pierre Gasly's handed it to him on a plate. He's locked up. I'm guessing it's into Tosa. There's Piastri. And there goes Gasly uh, doing a Lewis Hamilton. And Oscar says, thanks very much. I'll have P4. We are now on to lap 50. And George Russell is within three seconds of Charles Leclerc. And Lando Norris has dropped off the pace. 
quite significantly. He's eight seconds behind us now. And now the race is just about whether George catches Charles Leclerc with enough time to make the overtake. We are just set a fastest lap of 16-2. We are closing down the, for the, the former Ferrari driver who's just done a 16-5. So let's... Oh, we've got Fred Vesti could do us a real favour here by blocking... He didn't. He didn't. Fred. Did he give us DRS? Did he give us DRS? He did not. He did not give us DRS. But we are now within two seconds of Leclerc. The sole remaining Red Bull after Verstappen crashed out, which will see him drop from second in the championship. All right, now we're in DRS range. We have had to use the best of our tyres, though, to get here. They're getting a bit warm. Going high overtake aggression. Driving in clean air. Is this the moment we take the lead? We're half a second back. I don't think we're close enough, really. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get George to harvest. Charge the pack. And then we're going to deploy it big time on the next lap. We are very close, though, to taking the lead of this race. Okay, here we go, then. George Russell. Deploy. Is he already driving in clean air? He is. I don't think we'll need to turn the overtake aggression up. Here we go, then. George Russell versus Charles Leclerc. Again, I don't think we're close enough. And moving to the outside is probably not the one. Leclerc moves to defend it and does so. Oh, he just checked us up there. Is he driving on the grass? We are deploying. Let's deploy. We'll attack on the tyres. We'll also push on the fuel. He's, oh, he's, he's almost past him already. George Russell takes the lead of the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. He was not prepared to wait a second longer. Nice and move. we're in the lead. Right. <laughs> we'll watch the replay of this. Just round the outside of second Rivazza. Gets the racing line, gets the traction and the DRS and just blasts past. Come on. We'll take that. We want to return to winning ways here at Mercedes. Now we just need to pull away if we can. And we'll just go through to the end of the race here. And we'll win it. The strategy has worked. We, do, we did need that safety car, that, well, that, v, that VSC, to give us the free pit stop. I don't think we'd have been fast enough without it to win the race. But we're going to win it at a decent margin here. Let's just go light on the tyres so they don't go pop on the final lap. We've reached the perilous 30% point. And we start the final lap in the lead. Just please don't go pop tyres. Pray for the tyres. Make it to the end of the race, please. Let's even just conserve on them. Very, very gentle, please, George. Be a gentle George on this final lap. Leclerc can have the DRS because he won't have time to use it. He's reeling us in. It's getting very, very close. He will get the DRS. Will he just dive bomb us into the final corner? Let's go aggressive. There we go. We've made it to the line. We've just, just made it. We've just held him off. George Russell wins the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. Mercedes are back to winning ways and he extends his championship lead. Lando Norris finishes third. So there's a Ferrari on the podium for the Tifosi. Oscar Piastri is going to come home and take a well earned P4. He did a really good job today, did Oscar? Now we have check it flag Sixth to fourth on the two stop. Gasly made a mistake. Piastri didn't. Thanks Very everyone. nicely done indeed, Oscar. The national anthems are playing and they're celebrating in the pit lane at Mercedes. We know how to celebrate in Imola, don't we, at Mercedes? Obviously where they won their record-breaking seventh straight Constructors' Championship, breaking Ferrari's record at that point as well. There's the man of the moment, George Russell. 
flanked by Charles Leclerc and Lando Norris. Max Verstappen will be kicking himself after today, crashing out when really he would probably won the race. We probably wouldn't have been fast enough, but that mistake gave us the chance to win it with the free pit stop. We still had to manage the tyres, but George did the job. We get a very close up shot of Lando Norris. George has teleported himself from the podium to the pit lane. The pure magician that he is. And he can celebrate with the team. Let's have a look at the results then. Norris, uh, Norris, Russell and Piastri both moving forward two spots to improve their positions. George actually got the bonus point as well for the fastest lap. Lance Stroll coming forward 10 places, as did Felipe Drogovic. What strategy were they on? Sainz moving forward, Albon moved forward. A lot of drivers falling out of the top 10. Thanks for Stappen in the wall. Let's see what it does for the Constructors' Championship. Mercedes retake the top spot from Red Bull. We've outscored them by 20 points here at Imola. And we reassert our position as the number one team in Formula One at the moment. George Russell now has a 27 point advantage in the championship. That's more than a Grand Prix victory. So he could crash out of the next race in Spain. Charles Leclerc can win it with the fastest lap and he still won't overtake it. So uh, that is good. Although I think Spain might be a uh, sprint race. So ignore all that. But if there was no sprint race, that's definitely possible. Verstappen drops to fourth. Piastri now up to P5. So that's a little bit better. Oscar getting his feet under the table. We'll give him half a season to find his feet, get himself all sorted out, get the, the road rust off as well, having not driven for a year. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll get there eventually with him. But we've got to the top, of, top step of the podium with George Russell and we lead both championships once again. Well, that was a cracking win, wasn't it? Make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more F1 Manager content. And remember, you're the best fans. I'll see you in Spain. It's goodbye for now.